For this video, I'd like to talk about the concepts of domain and range, specifically how to calculate them or how to find them from looking at a graph. So before we start going to the specific problems, let's do a brief overview of what domain and range actually are. So the domain is essentially the set of all x values or all values of the independent variable that can actually be graphed or used in the function. So let me write down just kind of a simple definition for that. So like I said, it's basically all of the x values that are actually used within the function. But it doesn't have to be x values. I use that more specifically because that's what these problems used. But in general, you want to think that the domain deals with the independent variable. Now, the idea of range is very similar. It just deals with the y values, or in other words, the dependent variables. So let me write that down. Just a simple English definition of the range. So in summary, the range is just all of the y values, or all values of our dependent variable, that are used within our function, or that are a part of the graph of the function. So let me just reiterate this, that the range deals with the dependent variables. And in general, the domain is almost always easier to find. The range, to find that, you really need to know what the graph looks like, which can be challenging with different functions. The domain, there's only a couple different issues that you got to look at. You can't do division by zero, and at least for the sake of algebra, at least the high school version, you can't take square roots of negative numbers. Or you can, but you can't graph square roots of negative numbers, at least not with our normal xy coordinate plane. So we restrict values that either divide by zero or end up in square roots of negative numbers when talking about the domain of these functions. But with the range, it's basically whatever the resulting graph looks like, whatever the lowest y value is to the highest y value, that will be the range. Now, with these definitions in mind, let's actually try to answer some of these questions, specifically, specifically looking at graphed functions. So in this one, we need to know the domain of f. So we're looking at what x values are actually graphed in this function. And so the main idea for both domain and range is that you're going to start with your lowest value and you're going to end with your highest value. And x could also be equal to the lowest or highest values. It just kind of depends on the situation. Like here, notice that the lowest x value or the one that's farthest to the left would be at negative 7. That is, in essence, the first x value that's used. It's the lowest numerically. And in this case, since it's a filled in circle, we can say that negative 7 is actually a part of the domain. So let me write out domain is that minus 7 is our lowest possible x value. So x always has to be bigger than or equal to that. But now we go to the highest possible x value, or the one furthest to the right, and that looks to be at positive 7. And it can include that point as well because it's a filled in circle. So x has to be bigger than or equal to minus 7 or less than or equal to 7. And this is certainly one way to write the domain, but there are other ways to write the domain. You can also use what's called interval notation. And essentially it works the same way. It always goes lowest to highest. And depending on if the point is included or not, like when you had minus 7 and 7, they were both included in the domain. So using the inequalities, we just had greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. When you're using interval notation, essentially what's equivalent to the less than or equal to is the bracket symbol. Now, if it was just going to be greater than minus 7, then we would use a parentheses instead. But with that in mind, for this specific no domain, we would say the lowest is at negative 7, and we use a bracket because it includes that point, and the highest is at 7. And we'll close it with a bracket because, again, it includes that point. 
So these are probably the two most common ways that you'll see the domain written, either using inequalities or this interval notation.